So today, today we are talking about how many hours um, you need of photography. And a lot of you that are in this early stages of hiring a photographer and booking one and like picking out, okay, um, what, what first, first of all, which photographer do I want? But also like, okay, now that I've picked this photographer, which collection am I going with? How many hours do I really need? And you know, that can be a really tough decision. Like you're, I mean, you're, you're like guessing, like, do I need five hours? Do I need 10 hours? Do I need 12 hours? You may have no idea how many hours you need of photography. And uh, that's a good thing. We're going to be talking about that today. And I'm going to be kind of breaking that down and giving you some ideas on uh, how to figure out how many hours of photography you need. I'm trying to think back to when I got married. And so we're talking like 15 years ago. I know I'm ancient. Um, but I'm trying to remember how many hours we actually got with our photographer. And um, did we actually get all the hours we needed? Or did we get too many hours? You know, that's something I'm trying to think back. And I'm, I may kind of talk about as we go through this, you know, from my own experience. But also, um, you know, also what I've seen on my side as a photographer and how the hours affect me and might affect my couple. So we're going to talk about all that jazz today. So first thing to understand, guys, is it will vary from person to person, um, especially with the way things are going nowadays with COVID. And, you know, it's like a lot of people are moving towards these elopement weddings or these micro weddings, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, it's just changing how people do things and the amount of hours they may need. So there is not a set answer. I can't say everyone needs X amount of hours because there's, there's no way to know for sure if that's true or not. Um, and you know, it's different from photographer to photographer. What might take me 30 minutes might take another photographer an hour um, and then maybe they spend two hours on something and I only spend an hour on something. So it's going to be different from, uh, for each situation, but you can still take some of this stuff and apply it. And I think you'll have a good idea, um, of where you need to be by the end of this video, or at least a, a, a way to figure it out. So if you're in that early stages of booking, you haven't booked a photographer yet. So you're talking to different photographers see what each one's offering, you know, before you actually book. I mean, looking at the hours is one of those things that I would consider, you know, if one photographer is $3,000 for three hours and another photographer is $3,000 for eight hours, you know, that the hours should play a little bit into your decision. Um, I mean, there are other things and we're not going to get into that, but, you know, think about that. And one thing you might notice is some people will say full day coverage and others will give you a certain amount of time. So we'll talk about that in a minute too, but just, you know, when you're making that decision, when you're looking and doing research and talking to photographers, make sure you do look at the amount of time you are given. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about this full day coverage thing. Cause again, you may hear this. So when I got married, our photographer said full day coverage. When I started doing photography, I said full day coverage. Um, people are still saying that. And so let's try and clarify what that might mean. So depending on the photographer, it may mean different things. So when you, when you hear full day coverage, I would ask for clarification from them. Does that mean unlimited hours? Um, with our photographer, I think it pretty much was unlimited hours. When I first started off a long time ago, it was unlimited hours. But to other people, it may mean, full day coverage may mean that they cover all the important events of the day. That doesn't mean that they're going to be there from 7 in the morning till 12 o'clock at night, you know? it may mean that they're just going to be there to get all of the big things. So like they'll be there for the getting ready all the way to the exit. But that doesn't mean they're going to be there for the entire day. Okay. Um, so I would clarify that with them. Make sure you understand. Now, do you need unlimited hours? Um, 
my my answer is no. I really, really don't think you need unlimited hours. I mean, there's there's coverage and then there's over coverage, and we'll talk about the problems with with unlimited hours. Um, so I remember this one wedding. This was probably oh man, ten years ago, maybe longer. And, um, you know, they asked us to show up at like eight in the morning, right? And the best part is we had to drive like, I think two hours to get there. So, uh, it was an early start and, you know, we get there and we're doing stuff and like literally they're getting ready for probably like four hours. And so much of that, that time was just completely a waste. I mean, I might've gotten a few good photos here and there. But it was not worth me being there for four hours. I mean, definitely was not. And so, I mean, like, think about that part this way. Do you really want photos without your hair done, without your makeup, when you're looking kind of rough? Um, maybe you're, you're still waking up? Probably not. So, you know, asking someone to be there as soon as everyone gets there in the morning is not a good idea. You want them to show up towards the end of the makeup process so that you look, you know, decent, um, and, you know, that same wedding, I'm trying, I can't remember how long we stayed, but I've had situations where receptions seem to last forever. Do you really need five hours of the same people dancing? Probably not. You're going to get those photos, and you're going to have, like, the same photos over and over and over again, so there's really not a need for that. So, as far as like when you say unlimited hours, a lot of it's waste. A lot of it is just waste. I mean, you don't need the same photos. You don't need a lot of those things. So, that part of it I don't think is important. The other big thing, you know, a photographer only has so much energy. And, I mean, think about yourself. If you're working a 12-hour day, 13-hour day, and you're on your feet running around the whole time, I mean, that's physically draining, but, you know, uh, being a wedding photographer is also mentally and emotionally draining, and, you know, if you ask somebody to do that, the last chunk of photos may not be the same quality as the rest of the day because they're just done, like, they're just physically, mentally, emotionally done, and I've had that happen before, again, when I was doing these this unlimited hour stuff, so, again, guys, I don't think you really need unlimited hours. It is overkill. It is too much. Another big point to make and understand is um, for almost every photographer, it is continuous coverage. What that means is as soon as they start taking photos, the timer starts. And, you know, it doesn't stop. You know, just because you guys decided to take a break and sit there and eat food for an hour, that doesn't mean that the photographer's time stops. It doesn't. They are, they have started working and they are working and they are working until that time is up. Um, and, you know, I've had people tr ask me that before. I'm like, but I mean, I'm, I'm on the job. I can't just stop, you know, stop the time and just start it again when you are ready for me to do work again. Um, and you know, there are things to think about with this, the, the fact that it's continuous coverage. So like travel time, you may end up losing a lot of your day if you travel around a lot. Um, I know there's been days where I spent like two hours driving and so like they paid me to drive for two hours. Um, I've had times where people took big breaks in the day, and so I got paid to, you know, there wasn't a whole lot going on, and it's just something to consider when you are planning your day and thinking about how much time you need, is, you know, you probably want to minimize those giant chunks of time where nothing is really happening, that wasted time, because you will be paying someone t uh, during that time. Now, here are the different parts of the day and the general breakdown. Um, Again, this this varies, okay? Again, so please understand that this is not going to fit for everybody, and that's why I have some ranges there. Sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer, but this will give you a general idea of what to expect. 
Now, when I say getting ready, that doesn't mean for you guys to actually getting ready. I mean, that's like how long the photographer will be there. Maybe two to three hours of the getting ready process. Um, and that's like guys and girls. So that's not just like sitting there with just the girls. That could be the guys and the girls. Ceremonies these days, uh, most of them tend to be like 20 minutes. But I put 30 to 45 because you have those occasional uh, Catholic hour masses and so I just kind of averaged it out 30 to 45 minutes but most of the time the ceremony is under 30 minutes these days family portraits again this is going to vary depending on how big your family is and how many groups you want I usually say 30 minutes portraits this is like all the portraits so like the wedding party portraits the group portraits of all those people um, the individual photos Pictures of just the bride, pictures of just the groom, pictures of the bride and groom. Um, that's what I kind of chunked into that portrait time. And it, that's probably going to be divided up somehow, so it's not all going to be at one time. But overall, I would say an hour to two hours, depending on how big your group is and how important portraits are to you. Um, like, for example, if portraits are important to you, you might do a first look and do portraits before the session or before the ceremony. And then you might do more couple portraits after the ceremony as well. And then this reception could be two to four hours. Uh, I mean, I, I've seen some where I've been there longer. But again, I wouldn't suggest you pay the photographer to be at the reception over five hours. I mean, that's just, there's just not a whole lot going on at that point. I mean, unless you're just, totally against an, a fake exit and you just really want the photographer there but I mean most people are going to be getting tired by the time that five hours is rolling around people are going to be leaving and like I said a lot of the same photos are, have already happened you know all the dancing we've been taking photos of dancing for two hours now do you really want more more than two hours of dancing photos probably not so again this will break it down so I mean on the short end, you're looking at, let's see, two and a half, three, four, six hours. So on the short end, maybe six hours of coverage. On the long end, um, three, four, four and a half, eight, I mean, maybe 10 hours, which is, which is kind of what I tell people. I don't like doing less than six hours. And, you know, over 10 hours, I start to get a little tired and um, things are, become repetitive. So... That's kind of the general range. Now, how do you go and figure this out for yourself? We have a, a general range there. So six to 10 hours maybe of wedding coverage for you and your photographer. So I say this with so, with so many things, but decide what's important to you. You don't have to do what everyone else does. You don't have to do it exactly the same way everyone else does. Think about what's important to you. So going through those like things, those th different types of things throughout the day, the getting ready process, the ceremony, um, reception, family portraits, portraits, which one of those is really important to you? And um, you're going to know that you're going to spend more time with that. So if your group is a dancing and partying group, you're probably going to have a longer reception. If portraits are extremely important to you, then you would probably be on the longer end for the portraits, so you might be on the two hour thing. Um, but same thing, if you just know, if you know that people aren't gonna hang around very long, you can be like, okay, the reception may last two hours. Okay, if you know the ceremony is gonna be super short, yeah, 15 minutes, we're done, boom, we're out. But think about those things. Think about the type of people you're having there. Think about what's important to you, and that will guide you on figuring out how much time you need. You know, once you've hired a photographer, talk to them. Like, what do you normally do? How much time do you normally spend? And that's a question I get a lot. And like I said, for me, it's like six to 10 hours. Eight hours is probably a pretty good sweet spot. And they will give you a general idea of what they think. Now, from there, you could always just go and sketch out a general timeline using those hours. Like, okay, so if I've got the photographer for eight hours and I do this, 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 how many hours does that equal up to? Okay, I still, I'm still over 30 minutes, so maybe we need to adjust this. It just gives you a general idea, and you can kind of figure it out. 
Um, you know, also going to this, you know, considering your budget and what the photographer offers. So again, if you're on a limited budget, you might not be able to afford to have the photographer there for, for eight hours, 10 hours. You may be only able to afford for five hours. All this just needs to come into your, to your brain when you're making these decisions. And towards the end, what you'll want to do is you'll want to work with like the, the planner and the photographer, if you have a planner, and make an actual schedule of time. Like, okay, this is how it's going to run. And then you can see, okay, was my estimate, my estimate of eight hours, will that actually work with what we've created on this schedule? And, you know, from there, you can make adjustments, which is kind of the next thing on here. So overall, guys, I will always tell you more time is better than not enough. Uh, there's been so many weddings. <sighs> I used to I used to do about six hours on the on the normal and six hours. It was it was rough to fit in everything. Like, honestly, we were rushing from one thing to the next a lot of the time. And, you know, that's stressful on them. That's stressful on me. Sometimes we didn't have time to do things. And if you can do it, more time is going to be better. But again, you know, there's still that point where too much time is not good either. Um, you can always talk to your photographer about adding more time if needed. So I would ask them, okay, if we need extra time, how much is that going to be? And, you know, do we need to know beforehand that we're going to need extra time or like the day of? So like, if the day of is going and the reception is rocking and we're loving it and it's so awesome, will you stay an extra hour if we ask you to? You know, some photographers would be like, yeah, of course. And some photographers would be like, no, I'm sorry. I have other things I have to do and I can't stay any longer than what we've already talked about. Um, but that's, that's sometimes a good idea is, you know, waiting until the actual day to see how things are flowing. You know, you may think your reception is going to last five hours, but really it only lasts three hours and you wouldn't want to pay for those extra two hours if you're not going to use it. Um, but yeah, talk to them, get a feel for it all. See, see what they're, what they're doing, whether they're willing to change or not. And, you know, just kind of figure that out. Back to me, back to me. So, like I said, guys, it's not, there's not an exact science that I can tell you this is how many hours you need because we're all different. I mean, one wedding, there might be driving 30 minutes to the ceremony, then driving 30 minutes to somewhere else. And uh, another wedding, you may not have any kind of travel at all. So, just kind of keep that in mind. Keep that in mind and... Again, some, some weddings may be a giant party and some may be 20 people. The receptions are going to be extremely different and one's going to be really long and the other's going to be really short. It's just kind of a, a guideline. Like I said my general guideline for most people is six to 10 hours of photography coverage, but I've done, you know, I've done stuff as short as like an hour for those like elopement type weddings or uh, micro weddings. So Hopefully this has been helpful, guys. As always, if you have questions, if you need if you need more information about um, creating that timeline, I can help you with that. If you're just wondering, like if you're wondering more about the unlimited hours and if you think that's a good idea or not, you know, whatever I can do to help you guys, feel free to always reach out and I will be there to help you, to give you information and advice and whatever. All right. Enjoy your snow day. I am going to let the kids run free and see what happens. And uh, I will be back later. Bye, guys.